Hello everyone, Craig Wessels from A Yank on the Footy, and I would like to welcome you to this live episode that I just finished up recording, and I want to thank the handful of folks that uh, tuned in for the live episode. Really appreciate you tuning in, some great questions, some, some great banter back and forth there. I really liked the idea of doing the live episode, it's a lot of fun. It's a little stressful while you're doing it, but it's a lot less work, quite frankly, because if you're going to just let it fly, you let it fly after you get done. So sit back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoy it. We're going to look at the uh, the picks for round three. We're going to talk about the elephant in the room, the the big uh, news story of this week. Uh, going to talk about a, a real hero in the AFLW. And... Um, Bob Murphy's got a pretty interesting idea, and I think maybe some people are actually going to like it. So sit back and relax, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I hope you'll share the episode with your friends and family. Put a link in your uh, social media sites. Remember, if you want to reach me, you can reach me at yankonthefooty at gmail.com at yank underscore on on Twitter. You can also reach me at yankonthefooty on Instagram and on Facebook. You know, take a look at the show notes. Uh, I've got a couple things there that you might find interesting. Uh, I've got the, the Redbubble page there. Also the the uh, Buy Me a uh, Coffee link there if you want to help support the podcast. Trying to get that uh, standalone website up and running. Would truly appreciate your help with that if you're, if you're so inclined. Again, no pressure on that. But if you want to help out, I'd truly love it. That'd be fantastic. So sit back and enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, let me know what you think of the live episode. I, I kind of like the idea of doing this, and, you know, I only gave about a 10-minute warning on this this time around, and maybe if I do this a little bit later on again, I'll give more advanced warning and hopefully get a lot more people engaged and involved and asking questions and such. I, I, I kind of liked it. So hopefully you'll like it, too, if you haven't listened to my first one that I did live. So enjoy. Hello, everyone. This is Craig Wessels from A Yank on the Footy. And I wanted to come to you live this evening. It's been a hectic week. I've had a few things going on that uh, have kind of precluded me from being able to sit down and do the typical episode where I jump in and do the editing that I want to do and to get out an episode that uh, has all of the pizzazz that I wanted to have. So I decided to uh, go ahead and... Uh, put together a second live episode. I did one of these back in November and I was a little nervous when I did it, but I, uh, I really enjoyed this. The, uh, the last time I had a couple people get online and, uh, ask a couple questions here and there, and we'll see if anybody, uh, pops up on the, uh, the screen here. I, I have my notes and everything that I put together for a typical episode, but I just wanted to go ahead and do it as a live one. I, I kind of like the idea of doing this. It's, you know, kind of, as they say, flying by the seat of your pants. I, I do this sort of thing with regards to my, my job in many cases with being a teacher. You know, a lot of the things you do is, uh, is off the cuff. You have to think on your feet, even when you're sitting at your desk. But, you know, I wanted to dive into a couple of stories this week. Uh, you know, one huge one, you know, the, the elephant in the room, if you will. And uh, I, I don't know really what to uh, to think of it. Again, I know I commented on this last week in episode number seventy three, and um, it's it's sad to see uh, Mr. McGuire go. And a lot of the things that I've read online, you know, have stated that whether you like him or not. You can't deny the passion that he had for the Collingwood Magpies for the last 20 years. That he was a dynamic supporter for that club and would advocate for them in every possible fashion. So it is, uh, it's sad to see him go in that regard where you had somebody who was as passionate as he was about his club. But again, there's so many things that are, are going on. Uh, I printed out a copy of the, uh, the report that, that was released online uh, 
I printed out a PDF of that today and I've started to read through it a little bit. And it's it's really it's really interesting to see what had been going on. And quite frankly, it's uh it's something you have to ask yourself, is is this the only club where this is happening? I hope it is. But is it is it the only club in the only sport in the only country where it is happening? I don't know. You know, we've seen very overt evidence of racism in sports here in the United States. Uh, you had a, a problem with the gentleman who was the owner of the Los Angeles Clippers basketball team and comments that he had made, which had, you know, compelled him to give up ownership of the club, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where he had made derogatory comments about um, people of different ethnicities. And, you know, this is a lot like how I, I just tell my students that, uh, you know, just be decent to one another. Welcome aboard there. Let's ride 34. Thanks for tuning in there. I appreciate it. Uh, it's, uh, but like I said, I, I just, you know, I tell my students to, to just be decent to one another, to be respectful. You're going to go far in life doing that. And again, I don't know if that is something that was, you know, missing in Collingwood. I did see that they named uh, two people as co-presidents to replace him for the remainder of this year as they go forward. And of course, you know, Bucks' contract expires at the end of this year. So who knows if he's going to be back. You know, if they have a successful year, maybe he will be back. But, you know, we shall see. You know, so I, I really don't know what's going to be happening uh, next in this situation, but it's uh, it's really it's really sad to see somebody who gave as much as he did to his club just kind of you know end up losing it. Now, again, he was leaving at the end of this year, and I think he was hoping to leave on his terms, but once the uh, once this report got leaked, I think they realized that that something's going to have to happen. Somebody's going to have to uh, pay the price for that. And did Eddie do the honorable thing by by stepping down at this point in time to not have this linger on through the course of not only the AFL season, but the remainder of the AFLW season? You know, because the the Magpies AFLW club is having a pretty successful season as well right now. So maybe by him stepping away, it just helps to to clear the air to allow the 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 club to heal, if you will, and allows them. And maybe healing is not the right word. It allows them to address the issues that that have come out of this report with a new set of eyes, a new. Uh, group of ideas, somebody else coming up with some, you know, some new ways to go about resolving these things. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not an advocate for, for being disrespectful to, to anybody. And, uh, you know, this is one of the things that I've, I've talked about on this podcast since I've been doing it. To me, it's one of the blessings coming to the game as late in life as I did. You know, I'm, for those of you that don't know, I'm, I'm officially an old fart. I'm 57 years old. You know, I've been following the game now for about five years, and uh, you know, I don't have that that hatred of the rival clubs. You know, I do have the little sticker on the uh, the back window of my car that says, you know, you know, my two favorite teams are uh, you know are Geelong and whoever's playing Hawthorne. But you know, I I don't dislike Hawthorne. Okay, you know, I I know there's that rivalry there, but you know, I I appreciate good footy. So I, I can't uh, I can't say that I don't like what's what's going on there with with what's that, with what's happening there. So you know it's it's just a uh, it's just a sad situation that he had to leave in this fashion. Now you know one of the things I wanted to do with this, you know, I was going to give you my tips for this week, and again, I will turn around and then download this and publish this as a regular episode when it's all when it's all finished here. But uh, yeah, I wanted to to mention 
on here for those of you who are going to be listening to this later on. So, you know, let's ride. There's no pressure on you. This is not directed at you specifically here. Um, but I wanted to mention that if you're interested in any kind of uh, swag from the podcast, uh, that my store is open up on the Redbubble page. You can search that out in the show notes for each of the episodes. There's a link there. Uh, also, if, if you like the podcast, if you like what's going on, I don't have a Patreon page or anything of that nature, but I have set up what's called a uh, buy me a coffee page, which is just a little, you know, hey, like what you're doing, you know, help you out here. One of my hopes is to actually get a standalone website up and running to where it's not the one that's associated with the podcast host. It's one that is something that I have total control over that I can put in images and blog posts and things of that nature to just make it a much more, I think, user-friendly one-stop shop for things where I can just direct everybody to that website. I already have the domain name. I already own a yank on the footy.com. It's not live. So if you type it in, it's just going to take you nowhere. You're going to get a little spinning wheel on your machine. So, you know, if you want to help out the podcast, that'd be fantastic. The, the, the best thing is please share an episode with your friends, share it on your social media sites, hit that link, pop it on your, your uh, Instagram, on your Facebook or your Snapchat. I, I, I'm not on Snapchat. I, I'm not that uh, familiar with how that works. I think it's a little, it's a little outside of my my area of expertise. Actually, I had a conversation with my with my kids at school this week. We're looking at the uh, the tech companies and the First Amendment here in the United States with regards to free speech and freedom of the press and that type of thing. And we're I asked them. You know, the question, do, do the tech companies support the First Amendment? And they had to go in and research that and figure out how they were going to answer that question. And, uh, you know, we were talking about how many different programs they use. And, the, you know, the kids, are, they're on TikTok and Snapchat, and some of them are on Twitter or Instagram and that sort of thing. And I told them that I was on, I think, 11 different platforms. And that stunned them. Now, I, I you know, I have my Twitter account. I have actually have two different ones. I have my private, my personal one that I use that I have that I seldom am ever on, but I have the one for the podcast. I have my Facebook page. I'm on Instagram. I have a a personal Instagram, but I can't remember the last time I've been on that one, you know, YouTube. And there's several other discussion board ones that I post messages about the podcast as well, trying to get as much traction as I possibly can out there. So I, they were stunned when they said I, that I told them I was on 11 of them. And again, I don't sit there and on social media all night long with all those other ones. I, I'll post and then I'll get out of there. I'm on Reddit and actually posted some things on Tumblr, but I don't think that really took, I don't think anything on Tumblr was, uh, was all that uh, well-received. I don't think I've heard back from anybody on Tumblr. So, you know, I did want to uh, give a big shout out, though. I, I did have the uh, the first person actually put a donation on the uh, the Buy Me a Coffee page, and I do want to you know give a big shout out to to Frode down in Florida, huge Bulldog supporter. Frode, I really appreciate it, man. It it it. Uh, I did see it late last week when it showed up there and I know what, you know, we traded messages and I hadn't said anything about it yet. I wanted to hold on to it and put it here. I want to thank you for that, sir. Cause it, 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 I truly appreciate it. You know, it's, uh, it's something that I guess it allows me to say that, Hey, guess what? I'm technically now a professional podcaster. It's no longer just a hobby. Uh, so I do appreciate it. You know, again, if you, if you want to help out, I, I'm not, saying hey do this if you want to that's great i know times are tough for lots of folks time you know i I'd, so if you can't i completely understand it if you can that's fantastic if you want to scroll right past it that's cool too but if you want to just check out the page and see what's there by all means there's a link in the show notes and uh, that's another reason why i want to get the the uh separate uh website up and running so i can just link to those things and i can say here's everything on the page you go ahead and uh you go ahead and do what you want to do there. 
So, yes, sir, while I'm talking, I'm sorry, uh, let's ride. While I'm talking there, if you got any questions that you want to ask or anything of that nature, anything that you want to discuss, by all means, you know, you know, pop it on there and we'll we'll go from there. I think you're the only person that has uh, signed on as of right now. But, you know, while, while you're doing that or possibly I want to go ahead and uh, jump into my um, picks for this week. And. I'll be honest, I don't even remember what my tips were from last week because they canceled two games on me, and then they changed the schedule and they added two games back on there. So I don't remember who I tipped. I don't think I tipped the Cats to win. I don't think I tipped Richmond to win. Uh, But hold on, I might be doing that this week. So this week is... uh, Okay, that's a great question. How how different is the, the women's league as far as play style? Now, are you uh, from here in the United States? I'm, I'm assuming that that's the case that you're in the U.S. Uh, and I'm going to go. Ahead, I'm going to go with that assumption until you tell me differently. There, the I don't know if the style is. Uh, oh, you're a fellow U.S. Cats fan. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, I don't know if the style is a whole lot different. I would say the experience level is significantly different right now. But that's that's one of the, the 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 great things about what's happening in the women's in the women's comp right now, is you know the the men have been playing this game for years since it, you know since they started out in Auskick at I'm not sure what age level five six eight whatever it may be, and you know they've had you know over a decade of playing this game of playing cricket or playing basketball or soccer or maybe they played rugby along with it as well but they've had a lot of experience in this game you know, if you go back and you look at the uh the history of many of the players that are playing in the aflw many of them have come from other cops from other sports from soccer from netball from basketball from some of them have come from rugby, and I think they're probably the ones that are the better tacklers, quite frankly. Some of them have come from Gaelic football, because I think there are, what, 11 or 12 Irish players in the comp this year, in the women's comp, which is fantastic. And every week that goes by, and we see great women's contests being played, and we see them, you know, growing their skills, that's going to kind of jump back to those younger girls who are going to see the women playing this game and realize, you know what, maybe I can do that someday. And they start playing the os kick at a lower level at age five, six, eight, whatever the case may be. And by the time, you know, another decade or so goes by or another five or six years, depending on, you know, how many kids are getting involved now at age 12, 13, whatever the case may be. I think you're going to see the skill set of, of women's footy improve tremendously. Uh, two episodes ago, right after the first round, I went back and I looked at the scoring, the average scoring from each of the, the first uh, five, five years of the AFLW. And it, there was a, a continued increase in the amount of scoring going on. Now there was a hiccup, I believe last year in 2020, it took a step back. And, and I honestly, I think that had a lot to do with the, the fact that they added four new clubs to the competition last year in 2020. And so you had this huge increase of the number of people playing, but the talent pool was not that much significantly larger. I didn't quite come out right. You know, so you you had more and more people playing the game, but they were kind of learning it on the fly. They were they were figuring out how to play the game. They were they were coming from soccer. They were coming from basketball or netball, which I'm going to have to watch some videos on netball because I, I the whole it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of running in the game, but maybe there maybe there is, and I just have missed it. But the idea that there's a you know a basket there with with no backboard anywhere nearby i need to watch a video to see how that works because it just is uh i don't know if it's confusing or i'm just completely naive as far as how it goes so yeah as far as how the women's women's game is different from the men the men have been playing longer and you know i think they 
they they hit harder right now. Well, okay, that's maybe not a fair statement to say because I saw a couple of uh, I saw a couple of D cleaters this past weekend. I mean, there was, and I cannot remember which contest it was, but it was something that that professional wrestlers would have been proud of. I think it it was. I think they call it a suplex because they they the the player that was tackled lifted them up off the ground and just and just planted them right on their back. And it was, you know, it was a clean tackle and it was a solid tackle. It's the, ki- it's the kind of thing that's going to, and here's, here's the other key part. It's the kind of thing that's going to attract male fans to the game. Because I, I think you know, that maybe there are some purists who are, you know, I was a fan of the Sandful or the Waffle or the VFL or the, the, Games in the Northern Territories of the, I don't know how they pronounce the, how they pronounce the acronym, the NEAFL. And, you know, gosh darn it, women shouldn't be playing this game. I think if, if people who, who are kind of going into it with that mindset, see those kinds of tackles and see players who are kicking goals from 50 yards out and are seeing marks like the one that uh, uh, Pela Harris took back in, uh, in round round one. Yeah. Round one that they're going to come around and that's going to, that's going to bring, I think, reluctant fans to the games and who knows within maybe five years, they're not playing the games in the, on the grounds where they practice that they're playing the ground. They're playing the games at Marvel or at the MCG. And maybe they're, they're drawing in, uh, you know, 25,000 people at the MCG, 30,000 people at the MCG. It'd be great if they were putting, you know, 60 or 70,000 people in there. Maybe that's going to happen within a decade. One can only hope. Knock on wood, that's going to that's be something that happens that they, that they grow the game that significantly that you're going to see that kind of turnaround. So I, I don't know if that helped at all. I don't know if that answered your question, but I know I rambled on there for several minutes about it. Uh, but yeah, that was... Uh, that's kind of what my thought is as far as the, the difference in the women's game. Now the women are not, you know, the kicking is also something that, that is some, something that, that sometimes some of the women struggle with that. And, you know, I, I've wondered, and, and I don't know if this is a bad idea or a good idea. I've wondered what if instead of having the 50 meter arc for like they do with the men's game, what if they made it a 40 or 45 meter arc? You know, they, they, they painted the, the arc just a little bit closer, you know, and again, that, that doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but it, you know, it, it, it gives the illusion of, you know, kicking, you know, kicking the ball from outside 50. It gives that illusion, you know, a little bit more of an impact because, you know, most women kicking the ball are probably not going to be able to kick the ball as far as say a Tom Hawkins or a, uh, a Jack Rewald or something like that. So maybe just giving that illusion, I mean, you know, they're, pl- they're playing with a, a smaller football to begin with. It's a size four. I think it's a size four instead of a size five. So, you know, I think maybe they try something like that. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying something crazy, like, you know, make the, the, the goalpost wider or anything crazy like that. I'm not advocating anything silly like that, but you know, if you give the, uh, the illusion of the, uh, the forward 50, a little bit more of a look, you know, a, a look that makes it work for, you know, for women, it's, it's like in golf, you know, you have, uh, you have the, the, the men's tee, depending on the golf course you go to, you have the men's tee, you have like the professional tees, which are, you know, the professional men's tees, which are further back, and then the women's tees, which are a little bit closer. I don't think it's a whole lot different from that. You know, so I, I, I think that, you know, maybe that's something that, uh, maybe that's something that they, they consider doing. Maybe, maybe I have an idea there that the AFLW will adopt. Who knows? Now, I, I did have... You know, a couple of other things that I wanted to get into today. Um, I, I shared a link, or I will be sharing a link in the show notes for this, uh, and I sent it to Frode already. Uh, great interview that uh, Sarah Burt did with Bonnie Too Good. Uh, 
last week on her podcast and and she's uh Ms. Bird is somebody who I've connected with on on LinkedIn and I'm hoping to have on the show as a guest here very soon. So it has been amazing the the people that I've that I've connected with on Instagram. It's uh I have uh individuals uh who are involved in AFL India and AFL Asia who are wanting to come in in and on the show to talk about their their uh game how they're trying to grow the game in those countries and and who knows you know maybe in a generation or two you know you, you start seeing you know even more you know i know there's the international competition that already takes place there but maybe that grows maybe you know you start seeing it at different age levels instead of just at the at the you know that the senior level i believe that's what it's at is at the senior level maybe you have a men's and women's or i don't know but um, it was a great interview that that uh, that she did with Bonnie Too Good. I did post that, uh, but I've just been absolutely overwhelmed by the the interaction with people on LinkedIn. And I, if any of those people are listening, I can't thank you enough for for connecting with me. Um, and I think I said this in a previous episode. It, it's, it's been such a great response. It's like trying trying to get a drink of water out of a fire hose. I don't, I don't know where to start. And, uh, I, I, I talked, actually, I lamented about this a little bit with a couple of my students before the school day started. And, uh, they reminded me of a, of a, and I teach mostly 11th graders. So they're 16, 17 years old. And one of them reminded me and said, uh, remember how you told us, you know, we have a big problem to, uh, you know, you asked us a question about how you go about eating an elephant. Because at that time I asked them the question and they all looked at me like I was crazy, which, you know, is usually a couple days a week anyway. And uh, <laughs> they said, remember, you said just eat it one bite at a time. And I and I appreciate that 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 student telling me that because I, it, it's something I needed to hear, you know, because I've I've had this conversation with my wife who yeah, I've told her that I'm a little stressed out with what's going on as far as the. Uh, the podcast. Hey there, uh, Frode, welcome aboard. Uh, you're going to like this when you uh, go back and listen to the beginning of this because you've been mentioned already a couple of times there, sir. Uh, big thank you for uh, the contribution in the uh, the Buy Me a Coffee page there. I do appreciate that. And uh, I was telling him about the article that I shared with you uh, or the link to the Bonnie Too Good interview. But, uh, oh, where was I there? Um, you know, so my, you know, my kids are, my students are, uh, are telling me, you know, to go ahead and eat, you know, eat the elephant one bite at a time. So yeah. Oh, my wife. Yeah. My wife was telling me, you know, that if you're so stressed about this hobby, you don't have to apologize. I, I just decided to do this at, at nine o'clock at night. I, you know, I was getting ready to sit down and record the episode and I thought to myself, you know what, I'm not going to have time tonight to edit. So I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and do it live. And then after I finish it up, it'll download the live episode. And then I can go ahead and just upload that as my regular episode then. So the flying by the cedar pants thing is kind of fun. But, uh, you know, my wife said, if you're so stressed out about it, maybe you should stop doing the podcast. And I said, I said no, no, here's the thing. It's, it's a good stress. This isn't like a, oh, crap, nothing's working. I don't, uh, I don't have anything, you know, going on at all. And it's, it's, it's not fun anymore. I'm having an absolute blast doing it. And I, I don't know, you know, I had, like I said, I have to figure out which bite to take out of the elephant next. And I had something happen, not last night, but two nights ago, I uh, got up at three o'clock in the morning, which is when you're 57, you get up at three o'clock in the morning, sometimes beats the alternative of not getting up at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I always check my phone. I always check my you know, messages or see if there's any kind of a message on there. Cause I never know who I'm going to hear from. Um, you know, I'll, I'll trade messages with, uh, you know, lots of different people. And it was somebody who I've been speaking with, and I don't want to go into too much detail here, but it's somebody who I've been talking to online for several weeks and they reached out, uh, with an opportunity that I am, I, I can't I, I can't get into it yet because it's not finalized, but it is something that I 
am just absolutely stunned by the the offer that's that's come about and i'm very excited about it and i'm hoping it comes to fruition i think it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun if it does and i think it could really be beneficial to, to growing my podcast here as we go forward uh in into the second year now i think it, it, this could be a significant significant uh event so like i said i don't want to say too much about it yet because i'm still waiting to hear back um from from them to finalize some things i'm on board with it i'm thrilled with what's uh with what they're uh what they're discussing um and it is uh it's just going to be it's going to be something that's really interesting but we'll have to see what happens okay so yeah, I wanted to get into my tips for this week, uh, and you know, Frode, I, I think you're gonna you're gonna like my first tip of the week. You know, we've got you know, and I'm just gonna kind of read them as I wrote them out here because I was I, I wrote them out as I was gonna do a, a regular episode. So, got Geelong and Western, and while the Cats have had some positive things happen over the last couple of rounds or the first two rounds, they've not been close to picking up four points to this point. Okay. And uh, I don't think they're going to be close this week either. The uh, the three headed offensive machine that is uh, Ellie Blackburn and Isabel Huntington. There you go, Frode and Bonnie Too Good have, have scored you know nine goals six through the first two rounds, and you know I think this is going to be a, a competitive contest, but I I think the Bulldogs are just too strong right now. I think they're too good of a club, and uh, I think. They're going to help to keep the, the 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 top and the middle part of the ladder exciting, you know, going forward here. So, um, yeah, I've got I've got the Bulldogs winning this in by two goals. Okay, and uh, you know, and just because I'm not I'm not tipping the Cats doesn't mean that I won't be up tomorrow night at three o'clock in the morning to watch the game. I might be up at three o'clock in the morning to do other things first, but I will put the game on. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, it's uh. It should be uh, it should be very interesting. So I just got a new message on here. I have to figure out how to make that work here. I don't know what happened there. So let's see here. Uh, okay, let's see here. All right. Um, so GWS and Gold Coast, and uh, you know the Suns, their struggles have been on far with, uh, on par with Geelong's. They're they're both really scuffling this year. And at the president, you know, GWS isn't too far off. They've not been very good this year either. And uh, yeah, I do think the Giants are a better club right now than uh, than Gold Coast. So I've got the Giants winning this one by by seven points. And then the uh, the the schedule makers, the the fixture makers, wow, they went out of the way that their way this week. We've got four great matchups this week. Okay, you know, we've got St Kilda and Carlton. And this is, you know, like I said, this is the first of four. You know, the Blues have scuffled the first, you know, first couple weeks out of the gate. This is a team that I, I picked to play finals this year. And, and and let's be honest, this is a must win. If they don't win this game, I don't think they've got a snowball's chance in Hades of playing finals. I really don't. So, you know, I, I think St. Kilda needs it also because they're right now, you know, right now one and one as well. You know, they got squished last week by North Melbourne. And, you know, I think the Blues, uh, you know, they both need this win. I think the Blues, you know, get the win to help them get a foothold on the ladder. Is it going to be enough to, you know, possibly get them up to, you know, not not one one win is not going to get them in the top six at all, but uh, is it going to help springboard them into more wins? I don't know. Maybe. You know, so I've got the Blues uh, winning this one by 10 points. And then we get... Uh, to Melbourne and North Melbourne. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I could pick against the Ruse all season. I mean, they have just been an absolute machine. I don't know if anybody's actually looked at the percentages this year, but their percentage after two rounds is 560. And it's not even the highest. It's not even the highest as of right now. Okay. You know, it tells you know that percentage tells you a couple things. One, they can score whenever they want to. But it also tells you that they've played some, you know, teams that 
don't score very well or that they can keep off the scoreboard. You know, the D's percentages is almost 200 itself, I think 196. So, you know, I think this can be a great contest. I've got the Ruse winning this one by seven. They'll probably win it by 27, but I've got them winning it by seven because, again, I'm not trying to alienate anybody by saying, yeah, your team's going to get blown out. I'm, I don't want to do that. Uh, Adelaide and Fremantle, again, two more flag favorites there. Both of them have video game percentages. You know, they've got, you know, well, I'm playing on simple mode and, you know, I, you know, I'm winning my games 112 to nothing. You know, their their percentages are extraordinarily are high as well. Um, you know, both of them have played GWS and the Dockers. You know, they, they, I don't, I still don't think their uniforms are dry from last week. And uh, that was ugly. I've watched the first three quarters of that game. I haven't finished that one yet. I've been watching it at lunch at school. That was the last game I hadn't seen yet. So I was trying to get through that one. And I had somebody stop to talk to me today in the cafeteria. You know, so I've got the, yeah, I, I think that the Eagles are, I'm sorry, not the Eagles. I think that the, the Crows, wrong bird, are, are still too strong of a club right here. You know, both of these clubs could hoist the, the premiership trophy, though. Both of them can win it. But I've got, uh, I've got the Crows winning this one by eight. And uh, this is one that might surprise people. Okay, right now Brisbane's on top of the, the, the ladder. And their, their percentage is 751. I'm sorry, 757.1. They, their percentage is an international flight aircraft, a 757. We could all hop on one of those and go watch them play this weekend if we could get into the country. Uh, you know, they're a terrific club. You know, they, they, you know, last week, Dakota Davidson, uh, Jesse Wardlaw, they both kicked four goals. They both kicked four goals. Between the two of them, they've kicked more goals than the Tigers and Cats have combined so far through two rounds. They did that just last week. Now, that having been said, you know, the Magpies, they're not the Tigers or the Cats. They're a pretty scrappy club. And, you know, let's be honest, there's been a lot of stuff going on with the Magpies this week. Now, not necessarily directly with the, the women's club, but the... Uh, the the club overall, the overarching, and let, yeah, let's see, the elephant in the room, you know, Eddie McGuire's resignation. Uh, it's uh, it is definitely permeating the entire organization, and I think that this game is going to be kind of a catharsis for the Collingwood Club. I actually initially was tipping this game to Brisbane. I think that Carlton's going to win this, or not Carlton. I think Collingwood's going to win this one by four points. Okay. I think they're going to come out laser focused after all the tumult that's going on this week. And I think they're going to go ahead and actually take this game. So I've got Collingwood winning this one by four. All right. And then the last game of the week, you know, no, no disrespect to West coast or Richmond supporters. Neither one of them have won a game this year. I think Richmond still has not won a game yet. They are still uh, trying to get their first win, you know, from last year into this year. Um, you know, West Coast, you know, they're, they're beat up. That's one of the things I have noticed from watching the first three quarters of the game last week with, with Fremantle. They had a lot of injuries. Um, their ruck, uh, Paris Laurie, is likely to be out this week. Uh, she tweaked her knee a little bit. They said it's no structural damage. They said, and I, I still have to find out where the, the derivative of the term corky comes from, but they... The, the article I read said it was a cork uh, in her knee. You know, they still have three or four other players that are likely to be missing this game. Uh, dislocated finger, uh, a uh, torn webbing between fingers. That has to be painful right there. That I guess you can stitch that up pretty easily, but uh, yeah, I think that's going to be painful. I think Sabrina Frederick has a big game. Uh, this week, I think she gets a couple of goals, and I think the Tigers finally get to sing their song, and they're going to win this one by six. So those are the tips I had this week. That's what I think is going to happen. Um, yeah, I did see an interesting article, and Frode, I don't know if you've seen this yet. I'm sure you have. Uh, let me go ahead and click back on the article itself here. Uh, did I, I saw it on SEN and actually linked to an article from 2014 in the show notes as well where uh, Bob Murphy was on SEN today, and uh, this is uh, Nick Negropontis having posted this. 
Um, Murphy says it, uh, he says he believes that it's time for Western to ditch Western and go back to being called Footscray. What do you think about that? Think it's a good idea? I, I, I think it's a good, I think it's a good idea only because, you know, I, I kind of got called out last week and, and for, I don't know if it was you, but might have been somebody else that mentioned <clears throat> that they've never heard the Bulldogs referred to as Western. They always hear them called the Bulldogs or the Western Bulldogs, never Western. And I'd referred to them as Western. And it just, it sounds strange just calling him Western. Yeah, you know, it does. It just sound a little peculiar referring to them as, as just Western. So I, uh, I think maybe it's not a bad idea if they go back to being Footscray again, because you know, the article, the other article that I, that I read here, it was the, the team president that came in back in the nineties, I think it was that, that basically said that, you know, Footscray was kind of a, and this is, this is his words, not my words that, that Footscray was kind of like a rundown neighborhood or whatever, or area of Melbourne. And they didn't want to associate the club with that. So they went ahead and decided to have it be more of an overarching name and just change it to Western. I kind of like, I kind of like Footscray. I think it'd be great if they went back to that. And I, and I, I don't know. I don't know what, uh, um, yeah, that's who it was. Yeah. Yep. Dave Smorgan. Yeah, that's he, his name was linked in the other article as well, uh, which I've got in the, the show notes that'll come on, uh, that'll come along with this when I when I post this. You know, so it's. Um, I think you know, it gets back a little bit more to their to their their roots, uh, which is, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, for those of you who are in Australia, they're going to listen to this later on. I mean, yet we're here in here in northern Ohio where it's a balmy, I believe, uh, nine degrees Fahrenheit, uh, something like that. The, uh, the, the Cleveland Indians are playing their last year as the Cleveland Indians. They're going to be called something else next year. We don't know what yet. Uh, there are all sorts of names that are being tossed about. Um, you know, the, the, the story was that, uh, that they had, changed the name they'd gone with uh indians back in you know the the turn of the last century kind of in honor or in tribute to a uh a player that played for them who happened to be native american uh lewis lewis sock alexis was his name and it would be uh you know they kind of did that in tribute of him now it can certainly be looked at as being a derogatory name now uh and as much as it pains me to see the name being changed, I, I get it. I understand it being the case. Um, you know, so we'll we'll see what they come up with. I've heard, uh, I, and this is I, I'm I'm not a fan of this one. I've heard Blue Sox, and you know, so we'd have the Boston Red Sox, the Chicago White Sox, and the Cleveland Blue Sox. I don't like that one. I've heard I've heard Lakers because they're right on Lake Erie. That name's already taken. Uh, the one that. You know, I've heard, uh, what was it, uh, Commodores, because of, you know, us having such a, a significant uh, history in this area with uh, the U.S. Navy during, like, the War of 1812, that sort of thing, which actually was a battle fought not too far from where I am out in, in Lake Erie here. Um, but the one that they used to actually, they used to be called the Blues at one time. They were called the the Naps for their player manager, Napoleon Lajaway. Naps, I think, would be kind of a a good name, as bad as they've been playing lately, you know, in terms of being able to hit the baseball. A lot of people can then sleep in the stands. But the one I think they're going to probably go with, and this was another one that they've had previously, is the Spiders, the Cleveland Spiders. I think that's kind of a cool name. There's there's really nothing like that out there other than the University of Richmond. But, you know, that's – a Yes, I think going back to Footscray, I think it'd be kind of cool if they did that. And it's not, uh, you know, not something that's definitely going to happen, but but it very easily could. So, you know, I I think I touched on just about everything that uh, that I wanted to. Again, you know, I did link to the the Bonnie Too Good interview uh, from Sarah Bird. 
Um, oh, one last thing I did want to mention, and uh, I, I didn't mention this yet. You know, we talk about sports figures being heroes. And uh, last year I, I, I proclaimed on this podcast that, uh, that Jess Wushner was, was the most badass woman on the planet. Now, I've never spoken to her. I've never met her, of course. And if you don't know the story, she works as a stevedore working on the, the docks up in Brisbane. She was struck by lightning at work. And a few days later, she was back at practice. To me, that that is kind of the the ultimate tough person. That that just shows toughness right there. But another hero uh, that I wanted to to mention, uh, and this is a young lady that plays for Fremantle by the name of Evie Gooch. And I, I did pick up on this. I saw an article about this. Uh, did a little little reading on it. You know, she didn't have a huge game last week against uh, West Coast. Her club did get the win. But she's somebody who also, besides working with the uh, with the Dockers, she's a firefighter. She's a firefighter, and if you hadn't been uh, aware of what's going on, they've you know the, the fires are not as widespread as they were last year, but they've had some significant fires on the outskirts of Perth, and she's gone from you know playing. Um, so they said that she played you know, against GWS, they won by 30 points. And the next day she was out on the front line fighting fires and was fighting fires on and off all week. And, you know, coming back to practice and heading back out to fight the fires. To me, that that's somebody who's a hero right there. That that's that's a heroic, very selfless act on her part. And, and you know, if you're if you're a Dockers fan. You know, even if you're not, if you're just a footy fan or a human being, you tip your cap to her you know, and and. I think she's earned, I know she's earned my respect for doing, for doing that. It's just, it's you know, tremendous that, that somebody can do something that selfless and still has the, the ability and the, uh, the desire to come back and, and do something as difficult as playing footy. So I've kind of run through everything that I wanted to run through. Um, you know, again, you know, nor, you know, my normal episodes end up with it. If you've got any questions, by all means, you know, you know, jot them on, jot them on there. Um, yeah, I would love to, you know, hear from you there. I got S. Mitchie went ahead and uh, just joined in. And somebody by the name of Arf, it looks like A-R-F-F, just signed up as well. My screen is really small, the print's there. Yeah, Art, I'm sorry. Um, thanks for coming on. You know, we've... Uh, We've been on now for about 40 minutes and we, uh, you know, this episode will get uploaded as a, uh, as a standalone episode here fairly soon. It's one that I, I'll do minimal. I probably well, actually, I'm not going to do any editing on it. I, I, like I said earlier, I kind of like the idea of just getting on here and engaging with people and it's just kind of a whole new way of doing it. And maybe I'll get a little bit more comfortable doing it this way. So anybody have any, uh, questions on i feel like i'm back in my classroom anybody have any questions before the bell rings and we we head off to our next class period uh yeah so again you know folks if you want to reach me you can always reach me at, at yank on the footy at gmail.com you can reach me at yank underscore on on twitter um yank on the footy on uh facebook and on instagram hoping to have the uh website up and running here fairly soon uh, who's winning the premiership and why is it Geelong? Well, let's just go ahead and end it right there. I, I am with you on that. Uh, I'm with you on that, uh, right there. Um, I, I hope that's the case, of course, because if they don't win it this year, well, let's just say, uh, things could get pretty ugly down there because they, they, uh, they mortgaged the future quite a bit. You know, trading trading you know three first round picks. Now I believe they got two second round picks back in the Jeremy Cameron deal. So it's not like they you know just completely gutted their their uh, their basket of, of draft picks. And you know, the more I've been involved in in watching this game and reading about it and listening to podcasts and hearing what people who know a heck of a lot more about the game than I do know, they keep talking about. Geelong being a destination club that, that people want to 
play for that club. Now, I'll have to ask, you know, those of you who are going to be listening to this later on, when they say destination club, is it a, is it a destination club because it is a good club to play for? Or is it a destination club because it is one that is away from the hustle and bustle, if you will, of the major metropolitan areas that are Richmond, I'm sorry, that are uh, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Perth, Adelaide. Is that what is attractive? Is it is a relatively small town? And you know, for those of you that are listening in the United States, it's kind of the Green Bay Packers compared to the Chicago Bears in terms of the uh, the size of the uh, um, the populations. You know, Green Bay is not a big city. I think it's only got about 150,000 people. So half the city stands outside the stadium on game day complaining that they can't get in, and the other half are inside. So, again, you know, I, I ask you to consider, you know, sharing, you know, the, the, a link to the podcast with your friends. If you've got an episode that you love, put it out there on your social media. Tell them, you know, tell them what's great about it. And I'm hoping to have some interviews for you here in in the coming days. It's just been, it's been amazing the uh, the the turnout um, and the interest in it. I've just I've been stunned. Um, you know, Frode, you'll be interested. I, I've I've been uh, trading messages back and forth with Nathan Burke. Um, sounds like once the season's over, he may be interested in coming on. Um, yeah, it's just been, it's been amazing how many, how many folks are, uh, are actually interested in coming on board. So I, I'm, I'm thrilled about it. So any other questions or concerns at all that, it, you know, that you want to, uh, mention before we, uh, we wrap this up here, cause it's. Yeah, we're we're put we're closing in on an hour right now, and I don't want to go too much longer because then that might turn people off from wanting to listen to it at all if it's too long of an episode. So, I you know again I do appreciate those of you who were uh, well. Thank you, I appreciate. I think I know who this is. I think this is somebody that's not on Twitter anymore, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I think this is somebody that's not on Twitter anymore. Am I correct on that? Yep, I know who this is then. Okay, and I think I should have recognized the name. So I appreciate you uh, you finding this here. So I think you're on the mailing list. I think that's how it, you ended up getting it then. So that's fantastic. So yeah, I I like the live format. You know, it's... Uh, something I could probably do a lot more frequently, but it's just, uh, it's just a, uh, um, I have to have some kind of a template and, you know, it's, it's fun. And again, I, you know, I, I, I talk for my job. Yeah. I'm talking for a hobby, but I also talk for my job. You know, I, I, you know, teaching school, I, you know, I work as a public address announcer as well. So I do a lot of talking, uh, so I'm, I'm somewhat comfortable doing this part of it. So again, you know, those of you who have, uh, who have, have signed on today, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad that you did. Maybe, maybe next time I do this, I'll, uh, I'll give a slightly uh, larger window of, of time for notice. Cause I think I did, it was like 10 minutes uh, before I went ahead and, and did it. And then I actually, my email group, my email list, I, uh, it was only like three or four minutes. So that went, uh, that went pretty quickly. So I'm glad that, that some folks were able to, to come on here. So again, if you, if you're not on the email list and you want to, you want to be on the list. So when a new episode comes out, um, I, that's the first thing I do is I, before I put any of the posts onto Twitter or Instagram, that type of thing, I will put a, uh, a link to that episode in an email and send it out to those. I think there's like 28 people on the list. It's not a huge list right now. I guess, I guess I said, there's 28 names on the list. And one of them is my son and he doesn't listen to the podcast. Uh, so <laughs> um, if you want to sign up for that, there's a couple questions on a, on a Google form. It's just, you know, your name, your, your email address, 
who you, who you support, you know, what country do you live in, that kind of thing. You know, again, um, if you are interested in helping out the podcast, again, there's the uh, there'll be a link in the show notes for the uh, Redbubble uh, page if you're wanting to get a T-shirt or a sticker or something of that nature. Um, the the buy me a coffee thing is on there again. Fro, thank you so very much. I, I you didn't have to do that, sir, but I truly appreciate it. Uh, it was it was very uh, very kind of you. Um, that's go, that's going to be part of my uh, um, website. Of course, you know I I'd set money aside to do that uh, for the website, and I get a phone call from my daughter a couple of days ago, and she says uh, she says uh, hey I, I just joined a sorority, and. She basically said, hey, I need to get all this sorority swag. So there went that budget right out the window. So it's going to be another, uh, at least another month before I get the uh, the uh, podcast site up and running. So I can do a free week. I've got a coupon code for it. Uh, it's through something called Pod Pages. It's, it's kind of cool. Um, it's pretty easy to use because I've tried creating my podcast page on GoDaddy and uh, – it's just been a headache. Every time I get halfway through, Danica Patrick pops up on the screen, tells me I'm doing it wrong. Okay, that's not really what's happening, but it's uh, it's it's not something that I'm uh, as adept at doing as I as I should be. So, again, uh, those of you that that popped on here tonight, I truly appreciate it. Thanks so very much. Um, you know, me, and I'm going to close it out like I do a regular episode. May your dribble kick never hit the post. I will catch you later. And uh, thanks, guys. Um, thanks for coming on and, and doing this. If you are if you like this, maybe this is the format that I'll go with for you know the time being. Maybe I'll do this, and then I'll do interviews. Of course, I'll, when I go back and listen to this, I'm going to hear all the ums and the ahs and the pauses and the cough that came in and go, oh, that just sounded ugly. So, hey, folks, have a great evening. It's what, 10, 15 here on the East Coast. I'm going to uh, get my dogs outside one more time so they don't poop on the rug again. One of them did that today. Um, so have a fantastic evening, everybody. Stay safe, stay warm, unless you're in Florida and you're already warm. I know it probably got down to 60 today and you had to use three blankets, right? <laughs> have a great night, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up right there. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>